young Yemen girl. Her smile will not be cold, skin filled with gold. They don't want her to see how much she's worth. She likes to write. Education is not available for her. The only education she'll know is how to take care of a man that's twice her age. They won't teach her of her rights as human, only the oppression of patriarchy. So tell me, what is power when oppression lives inside of you? She will grow more into a poor queen. Too bad she was born woman, they'll say. Read her vagina like bread. Blind men try to read, it empowers them. They will treat her body like a house. They will wash all security up her walls. They will show up uninvited and uninviting. Her name is on the deed, but you know blind men can't read. Nor can they feel, her vagina is too woman, they'll say. The woman is too powerful to be whole, too whole to be holy. She is forced down to the groundwork, her dirt cemeteries become parallel. She can't tell the difference between her mind, body, spirit, and the invisible tombstones that lie with her. Both scream dead to her. Poor queen she is, she cannot afford to love herself, the consequences are too costly. They will cut off her genitalia, a procedure that is neither healthy nor safe. Blind men say it makes sexual intercourse feel better for them. Blind men say it will guarantee that she won't have sex before marriage. They say she's only valuable if she's virgin. They'll make sure that sexual intercourse is always painful for her. Teach her to, to dread her vagina. Marginalize and destroy anything that embraces her womanhood in fear of rebellion, infidelity, and impurity. It is the colonialism of vaginahood. A war zone, a prayer for peace. They will burn her breasts and bury them as burdens. Men can't handle the curve of her hips, so they'll tell her it's best to walk straight. Women are the only rep reproducers of mankind. There's so much power in her body, whether she knows it or not. So much power, they want to steal it from her. They fear her as they fear God. their God. Blind men can't see God. After all, blind men can't see anything, even the blood she sheds profusely. She is one of hundreds of girls that will pass from this misogynistic, dehumanizing practice called female genital, genital mutilation. We have to educate our people of what they're doing to our girls. Too bad she was born woman, they'll say. She could have led herself to death, till death. My next piece is, um, is a slave monologue, I guess we can call it. My name is Celia. I think it's pretty, but everybody back at the plantation calls me Coco. Yeah, he says it's because my skin resembles cocoa beans back from the motherland. I have a little brother named Raymond who's only five. I'm 14 years old, by the way. At least that's what they told me. Him and Yaya is all I got. I'm afraid of losing her. I have shattered words trapped in my memories. My eyes scream back at me in the mirror. They resemble papas. We have a mirror because Master says he wants us to look at how ugly we are. Yaya says I must not be ugly if he always puts his hands on me. She always puts my hair in these six, chunk these six chunky braids. I never leave my hair out because my hair is as kinky, as coarse as the life my people have struggled to live through. Nancy says I'm worthless and dumb. We ain't even allowed to read. You can't read. I heard Yaya's friends talk about how the white folks don't want us reading because they're scared we're going to outsmart them. The sun is drowning in the fields. Niggas are being whipped to the redness of our backs match the redness of the next. The white folks is angry with us. I begin to wonder if God is angry with us too. We scramble in the kitchen to cook mass and his wife some supper. I wonder how to cook the mass since I was six. He wants to eat a ham and some cornbread. The aroma starts to kick the inside of my stomach. I wonder why the folks always gotta be so damn, so damn selfish. He gives us leftovers. Other times he feeds us scraps of food like we some types of dogs or something. Sometimes I try and sing to get this food off my mind. These songs Yay yeah, taught us gives me the strength to live and fills my soul day by day. Midnight sneaks up behind us. I was awake scared. My yay is scared too. I miss my papa and his protection. He's dead. I'm tired of Master thinking he can invade my territory where he ain't got no business trespassing in. Papa was, try was killed trying to save me the first time Master raped me. He likes me because I'm small and got parts. His wife don't got flashbacks to flat flashbacks to flashes to Papa's back corrupting my soul. My nerves wrecked like debris off the shoreline. Remembering the way Master's eyes crept up again up against my skin, making all the hairs on my body scream. I was awake scared. It hurts Yaya more than it hurts me. I pretended as if I'm not existing, single songs in my head that she didn't talk me. I know I'm not the woman master forced me to be. I never had the strength of exhaling words to that man. See, whips and guns speak fast enough not with any Negro. But there's so much I'd rather say, rather say to God before I say to any of those folks. Life in heaven is way better than this. My right hand squeezed my hip doll as the bed pressed back and forth. I had my doll since I was little. 
how to say it here but that that's I have such a moment but the only time I ever have a voice is when I need to sing those songs. The song awakens us all that is our cue to start cleaning. Negroes out to Kaka until they got permanent crooks in their backs. Masks and other owners get together and have a buying frenzy on us like they are at the flea market. I heard yay yeah, yay. Yeah. I heard they wanted yay yeah, yay. Yeah. I scream and cried and held my brother Ray in my arms, squeezed Pablo's door on my right hand. Yay yeah, yay's yeah, friend lays his hand on the deck trying to show me comfort. If there was one thing I could read, it was lips. I watched the lips as she mouthed the word, she mouthed the word Coco, Coco, and Ray as they fortunately grabbed her. I had nothing. I had nothing but these songs she didn't tell me to sing. We are all abandoned, we'll never be free physically, mentally, nor spiritually. Massa owns and controls all of me to the day I actually just left to help with death. However, one thing he don't control is my relationship with God. I have shattered words trapped in my memories. Let this be the last life I live where I have to suffer.